Generative Fill has a prerequisite, and that is Photoshop on the Adobe Creative Cloud. You can get seven days completely free. I'm not an affiliate or anything like that, but the link is down below in the description. You would just click on Start Free Trial and Create an Account. That would have you install this right here, which is the Creative Cloud Desktop, and yours will look like this without anything installed to begin with. Now, yes, you can install an open Photoshop, but this is not where you're going to find the Generative Fill. You're going to go all the way down to beta apps and inside of beta apps you're going to download Photoshop beta. We're going to go ahead and open that and let that open while I answer a quick question. If you have never ran this before you may need to once signed in for the very first time click on the thing that says Behance. That's down here on the bottom left. You will need to log in to Behance with your Adobe ID in order to access generative fill. What it's going to do is prompt you to enter a country, city, state, and birth date. They mainly do the birth date to control who has access to the generative fill for NSFW reasons. You have to be over the age of 18 to use generative fill. So we're going to go ahead and go through the Behance step and then open our Photoshop beta. That's going to look like this right here and you can see one of the generatives that I have done before. I'm not sure why the one that you saw in the intro is not here, but regardless. We're going to go to the top left and click on new file. We're then going to just do this clipboard one right here for ease of access, but you can change the size however you see fit. We're then going to go ahead and click on create. So this brings us to this right here, and actually I want to do a landscape size. So let's go ahead and do this right here, make sure that other window is closed down. We are presented with a white blank slate essentially. Now why did I want to do this? Because I want extra area to generate. So I did grab my original generation from Midjourney. Here's the prompt I use, very simple, family camping around campfire. Uh, this is in uh, version 5 of Midjourney. So here we are right here. We can go ahead and save that image. We will then open our files and simply drag and drop. So you can see my files right here. I'm going to drag grab this image and just drop it onto the landscape here and we'll go ahead and click this little check mark. Now let's get started because the first thing we want to do is extend this. I'm going to go up to the top left and click this little box image right here. This is the rectangular marquee tool. We're going to grab say about 10% of our original image and extend it all the way out. Now I want to make sure that this actually does extend so let's go ahead and actually redo that. Okay, that's fine. Deselect and we'll go ahead and grab like this. Now it's nice to know you can start outside of the field and then you see this generative fill option that we have on the bottom left. This is going to be our prompting tool and we're just going to say extend center image to show forest and moon in sky and we'll go ahead and hit enter and we will let this load. Now once this is done, you'll notice that it's a bit weird. Luckily though, we have a few options. If we click on the section we just generated, we have three generations. Here's the first, here's the second, and here's the third. I think I like the second, so let's go ahead and stick with that. Now let's go to the right side, and using the same tool, let's go ahead and extend this further. We'll say continue image with forest and tent on ground. And we'll just go ahead and hit enter and let this load. Here we go. And of course we have our three generatives to choose from. We have one, two, and three. Uh, three is definitely out there. So let's go ahead and pick on number two. Now we can actually start editing what's inside of this image here. We can do so either by using this rectangular tool, but that's not my favorite when adding specific images. We're gonna go up to the top left and click on this. This is the lasso tool. This is gonna give us a bit more freedom with what we want. So let's go ahead and try and get some open sky right up in here. So let's say open night sky and 
click on generate or hit enter alternatively. All right, and yet again, we have the option to do three generatives. Um, the one that gives us the most open night sky is actually the third one. Let's go ahead and try and open up the right side of the image as well. Uh, let's go ahead and say generative fill, open night sky, remove trees, and see what it generates here for us. And here we have it. We do have the three options. I'm going to be going with the third generative. Now let's go ahead and have some fun. Let's have a UFO coming into picture right here. Let's just say alien spaceship and hit enter. And here we have it. You can see that we have our UFO. Let's go ahead and see the options it gave us. Uh, this would be option one, option two, and option three. I think I like option one best, but we can't have an alien spaceship without some aliens. So let's go ahead and grab our lasso tool and let's have them eerily on looking on our family over here. And generative fill, let's just go aliens standing looking at the family and go ahead and hit enter and see what it gives us. This might come out very interesting. All right, and here we have our image. This is a very nice unsuspecting family about to be abducted by aliens. Now remember, we started out with just this very central image and extended. You might notice that the generative fill was generative around the style of the photo we were using. Let me show you an example of something else. This is one that I had created prior to this, and we can actually look at this and have some fun as well. On the left, you can see the landscape that I grabbed from Midjourney Generative, and on the right, you can see how we changed it using this generative fill. We added some soldiers, some birds, lightning, and heck, even a castle. So keep in mind there's nothing you need to change, no settings you need to tweak. The generative fill will automatically recognize either the style, uh, the style or the, I don't, I don't want to say narrative, but the method that you're using or is being portrayed in the photo. Of course with this one, in mid-journey I used a cinematography still prompt and in the other one I used cartoon realism so it's very very different but the fill will recognize it no matter what now with these we're gonna go a step further if you haven't already my depth map tutorial which should be on your screen in just a moment is going to show us how to take this 2d image and make an entire 3d world out of it so that is our next step and that is going to be next in my workflow so check that out on your screen now if you want to know how to take your generations and and turn them into worlds.